that's a tool that you don't see every day. Uh, nope, I, that's, you summed it up pretty good. <gasps> you don't want to use it every day either. I mean, hell, the wrench weighs about a pound. It's <laughs> not as much of a poor table. This is, uh, this is a, a very old Rupes, Rupes rotary polisher. My friend Aaron in New Zealand came across this and sent he's it to me. Yeah, he's a Kiwi, and it's actually wired for, uh, who knows what that is, European? Yeah, it's European. So I, I can't plug it in and turn it off. You know what's kind of interesting? It's got this little uh, window place here. You can look in there and look at your brushes. I guess that's what yeah, it's for. Stick your fingers in there and see if it's working, <laughs> one or the other. It came with the wrenches, too, and uh, a couple things I noticed about it. On the, on the top of the body here, it says 1,500 RPM. The backing plate though actually says max speed of 8500 rpm and no well, that might be spinning at a different rpm than that it could be but last thing you want to do is hit a car with a pad spinning at 8500 rpm oops oops not my car <laughs> but uh and you know what uh, i have a big three-day detailing class coming up in about three weeks and i'm gonna have two people here yeah, from rupes um dylan yeah <laughs> he's uh, watching the monitor uh, down below yeah, yeah, what, what we're doing today so, yeah, anyway. Uh, but Dylan uh, Von Kleist and uh, Jason Brennan from Rupes will be here. And if you're watching this, guys, I'm really hoping one of you will put this in your suitcase and check it in, your check-in luggage, and take it to Rupes there in Colorado, and you can put it on display. That's what so. we could do. We could, Jason could take it, and that's his new demo thing, that tool that he's got to go around and display <laughs> all the... Yeah. I imagine stuff. it still works. So, and got all the wrenches for it. And, but, yeah, it's... Oh, it's, man, it's, it's heavy. heavy. All right, with that being said, thank you again for tuning in for our 44th episode of Live Detailing Classes. And like always, we appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in. And if you haven't, I'm going to do my spiel. I know it gets old, but I have to say it. If you haven't ever liked us, subscribed, or hit the bell, please do so. And always share with your friends. Plus, next week, finally, all the details have been done. We got some of the things in, I should say, things in. And we're going to debut that next week, so be sure to tune in next week because it's a huge. It's huge. I mean, huge. Yep. I don't know if I want to say huge or not. I think it's bigger than huge. What's bigger than huge? Uh, gi gigantic. Gigantic. Yeah. All right. So it's you guys definitely want to tune in because uh, galaxy size. It, it's it's pretty amazing what's happening here. And with that being said, today's topic is stump mic. Yeah, random questions and answers. Yeah, he had <laughs> no idea of what answers, I mean, what questions I went through and looked up on Detailing 101. If you're not a member over at Detailing 101, please go to our Facebook group, Detailing 101 by AutoGeek, and sign up. But I went through and I handpicked, I think it was like 15 different questions that I see quite a bit over there. And we're going to throw it to him and see what he... And while you're doing that, I have this Grills Garage touch-up paintbrush I'm going to detail. All right, well, while you're doing that, I'm going to go over here. So why don't you tell them about your detailing class while I get totally set up? Yeah, you know, the, um, I teach a three-day detailing class three times a year. Uh, the first one was in February. It was a huge success. The next one's coming up. It starts on Friday, April 30th, and then continues on Saturday, May 1st, and Sunday, May 2nd. And then I do... IDA phase two skills validation testing on Monday. Uh, but that's coming up in about three weeks and I have, I have 10, 10 VIP guests that are gonna be here. Let me see if I can rattle them off. Maybe you can uh, pull up uh, my thread on the forum and well, hold on. I gotta, I gotta do my little thing first then. then Tony I'll... Pando from Dr. Color Chip. So he's gonna be going over how to do rock chip repair. Um, Jason, as I just mentioned, Jason Brennan and Dylan Von Kleis, and they'll be uh, sharing the new Rupes DA system. Uh, and I got the whole system back over here to, for everybody to use. Uh, we've got, um, uh, yeah, I'm going to need your help. I can't remember his name. <laughs> we've got right, a well, gentleman from IGL. He's going to be here to talk about IGL coatings. Um, I have a, there's a, a thread on the forum, I think. If you look, it says uh, shock and awe. Because that uh, shows all the tools are going to be here. So it says shock and awe or something, then it lists everybody. Uh, we're going to have um, uh, Mike Serain from Flex is going to be here. Uh, Jim Lefebvre is going to be here from Dr. Beasley's. Rod Craft from Griot's Garage. Uh, anyway, a total of 10 guys. So what's kind of cool about that is when you're here, besides me teaching the class, you have all these other people that are just a wealth of knowledge about their specific brand 
and they're able to answer your questions, show you anything you want to see, and uh, makes for a really good class. And of course, I always have amazing cars for people to train on, and I'm waiting to get a confirmation right now, but I think one of the cars is going to be a 2001 Lotus Esprit twin turbo number one of 100 built. So uh, that'll be a pretty cool car. It's one of those bucket list cars. You know, I've never worked on, I've worked on Lotuses, but not the number one of 100 built, the anniversary special. I mean, there's, there's only 100 of them, and this is the number one. So after that one goes through the doors, so it'll probably be the last time I ever work on one of those. And of course, the class too. So, but some really cool stuff. And for wet sanding, you know, I think my class is really one of the only classes that brings in real street rods with custom paint jobs, because that's the kind of paint you wet sand. And um, lined up so far, I have a 1948 Suburban Street Rod with a fresh custom paint job. And that's one of the cars the class will be learning uh, wet sanding on. The last class we had a 1963 Plymouth Fury and a 1937 Ford Slantback Street Rod, both with brand new custom paint jobs. I'm happy to say my class wet sanded, cut and buff and polished them to perfection. So we do that on Sundays. So after you go through Friday and Saturday, learning all the different tools and doing tons of paint corrections, ceramic coatings, you come in, you're all tired, and the first thing I make you do is wet sand the car. You slave like driver. the hardest thing there is in this industry. You're the slave driver is what you are. I just kind of show them how, then stand back and cross my fingers. Okay, with that being said, are you ready? Sure. I am, uh, we're gonna try to stump Mike here today, so. We'll see if that happens or not. I, I have my answer book right here. You so. have your answer book? Oh, yeah, okay. So if I don't know it, it's probably in the book. All right. What I'm doing is I'm streaming through Detailing 101 on the far left. We have the answer man right there in the middle. Then me, I'm just going to be here off on the right. So here is Robert Stuffin. Stuffin? He's a member over there. Owner says last person he had detail of his Camaro SS left squirrels in the pinstripes. Any way to fix this? He said it's been that way for nine months. It looks like it's vinyl wrapped. Uh, yeah, um, those, those are more than pinstripes. Those are, I would call those just graphics. <laughs> Stripes. <laughs> you know, um, the, I'm dealing with another guy actually on the forum that bought a, um, I think it's a Roush Mustang and it's got a, uh, it's one of the special editions and it looks like the matte black stripes like that baked in the sun for 10 years, they are so bad. And I sent him three things to try to massage into that vinyl and try to bring some life and some color back to them. Uh, one of them was the Dr. Beasley's new LS10. Uh, I've used it on matte graphics and thought it did a good job. I sent him Sonax PNS and I actually sent him a, um, a dressing, it's a dressing concentrate, but you gotta understand, you go, well, that's not the right product for that. Yeah, but this thing's on its deathbed. It looks horrible. It's, it's completely, it's, it's almost white, it's so ugly. So you need to put something into it to bring the richness of color back. And then after you do that, then you can start finding ways to seal it. But for something like this, um, the problem with these materials is they're sensitive in that you cannot work on them. Um, here's what I would do. I mean, you're, you're really at the point now where um, you can't make them any worse, but I would get a very soft foam pad, and I've actually had good luck lightly machine polishing those. And With would, like a one step or, um, or you know, like a light polish? Like an, a ultra fine, an ultra fine polish. I would, if you have access to the new Rupes, um, what is that product? It's, uh, it's back here on the wall. You want to walk back there and grab it? Or you want to grab it? What? It's the, it's the white bottle of Rupes back oh, okay. there. It's an ultra fine polish. And I used that product on a 1950 Pontiac with the original black lacquer paint. And that paint, black is always the softest paint there is in the, in the single stage world because of the pigments, carbon black. And everything I was working on that, you know, antique, it's 70 years old uh, paint, was micromarring it. And so um, I give this a try, the Rupes Uno Pur Pure. Okay. And it worked flawless. So I use it with the foam finishing pad. But believe it or not, you got nothing else to lose. If it was me, I'd at least do a test spot on those graphics with a soft foam pad, a short stroke, or even a long stroke random orbital polisher. So a free spinning random orbital polisher and a soft foam pad. And just lightly machine polish it. And if they can be fixed or at least improved, that's what's going to do it. Your other options would be to take a soft foam um, applicator, like a wax applicator, 
and then find some type of product and just start massaging it over the graphic stripes and just go in a straight line. And again, I would look at something like the Dr. Beasley's LS10, um, the Sonax Palmer Net Shield, or like I sent this gentleman, the Blackfire uh, multi-surface um, dressing. It's a multi-surface dressing. And what your goal here is basically to just try to, you know, improve the, improve the appearance of it. You may not be able to fix it by hand, but if you can make it look better, at least you could live with it. So give that a try. Right. Sorry to hear that. And, and for all the detailers that are out there watching this, you know, today or into the future, anytime you're working with a matte surface like this, you really, uh, you need to know what you're doing, test whatever you're gonna touch it with in a small area if you can. But for the most part, you should just be leaving it alone, working on it by hand. You shouldn't be running a buffer over it. Tape off, people. Mask off. Do what you got to do. Yeah, yeah. It's a cool looking uh, color scheme too. I mean, I like the red and black. All right, let's go here. Um, oh, this one's a video. This one's actually be a good one for you, because I have seen this a good way. Uh, Brad Severson, <laughs> any good way to remove this concrete? How would you remove concrete? Yeah, there's a product out there called um, Backset by. Um, Romix, Romix. Can you type that into Google? Go to Romix Backset, oh, just like it sounds. Can't really. And they, they make a <laughs> chemical that you spray on there and it, it dissolves the concrete so you can basically just wash off the car. So it'll be, it, it, isn't cro it isn't corrosive to the paint or anything like that? No, nah, it won't hurt nothing. No, nah, I've been, been sharing this product with people for years. Uh, but it's, it's Romix, R-O-M-I-X, and that may be two words, and then Backset. And that's the name of the product that Romix makes to get concrete off of multiple different services. All right. Cool. Well, there you go, That was an Brandon. easy one. That was an easy one. I threw you, a, I threw you an easy one. All right. Uh, let's go here. Uh, this is Junior Corona. I hope you're not the one that started the Corona 19. Um, he says, what chemicals do you guys use to clean Alcantara seats? You know, one of the safest products out there is Sonax makes a product specifically for cleaning Alcantara. It comes in the form of a mousse. So when you, it's a, it has a pump head bottle, like a, a lady's mousse hair type product. And when you pump it, it aerates it into a foam. So the foam sits on the top, you agitate it. They actually make their own textile brushes, what it's called, to gently massage that, then wipe it off. And, and, and that works pretty good. And the cool thing about that is it will not change the appearance. The, what you gotta know about Alcantara, Micro Suede, and there's a bunch of names this is all referred to nowadays, is basically microfiber. It's like a 70-30 blend of microfiber. Uh, real real um, suede is the under the soft under skin of like deer and sheep, different animals. I mean, it's real leather. And it's very costly, and of course, you've got to have an animal to slaughter to get the uh, <laughs> you stuff you kill want. Something. You're limited in size. Well, the microfiber, I mean, they can make it any color. They can make it any size. It's just, and you know, microfiber is actually fairly durable. Uh, this is a microfiber towel, and this is probably like a, a 70-30 blend of polyester to polyano, uh, nylon. And um, it's, very, it's actually, it's soft, and it's also durable. So the th key thing with... Um, Alcantara, though, is, is uh, pick a product that's made specifically for it, follow the directions, and um, you'll be okay. Yeah, and actually, we have our friend Thomas Kirby. Dr. Beasley has their own microfiber cleaner and protectant. Alcantara? That's what he's thinking. Okay. This is about Alcantara, but um, a microfiber cleaner would be something, uh, since Alcantara is microfiber, that would work. Um, in our Pinnacle Black Label line, we have a cleaner and I think a protectant. So uh, something that uh, would create, you know, a, a stain-resistant surface. So yes, there, we do. What yeah. is that called? Um, uh, micro, it's called Pinnacle Black Label Alcantara Cleaner and Alcantara Protectant, yeah. I think. Uh, I wrote a review did, for did, it. Did, did, I used did. it on my uh, brother-in-law's Corvette. Okay. So, uh, and it works really good. So you, here's the big thing you want to do is always pick an established brand that you trust. And then trust that they have a chemist that knows what they're doing when they make the product. And then follow the directions. You know, I share this with people all the time. But w one of the jobs I had when I worked for Meguiar's was I was the corporate writer. So in 2002, I took over all the writing duties for Barry Meguiar. The company had just grown so far so fast that he had always traditionally done all the writing for the company. He just couldn't keep up with it. So I was hired to become the writer. And anytime they launched a new product, okay, here's a product, um, 
That's not Meguiar's, but yeah. But, it's, but anytime <laughs> they, but most most companies the same way. Anytime they launch a new product, one of the things I had to do is make an appointment with the head chemist and get the directions on how to apply. It. You know what are the specifics? You know so they're accurate. I mean the chemist should know how to use that product and. They want that relay to be accurate onto the label. So one of the things I did, of course, I, I did label writing. Okay. But if we assume every reputable established company out there, Gion, Mothers, 3M, whoever it may be, has a guide like what I did. It was a writer. And when they launch a new product, they make a, an appointment with the chemist. Or the chemist you know, types up the direction and emails it to them. And that's what's listed on there. But that's why you want to follow the directions. In most cases, they weren't just pulled out of the air. Somebody... <laughs> You know, somebody said, here's how you use this product that actually knows what they're talking about. All right. So read the label. Read the directions. All yep. right, let's go here. Um, actually, this one I thought was pretty yeah. amazing. I'm actually going to probably blow this one up. It's not so much as a question to you, but it comes back to your old saying, the power's in the before shot. Yeah. Because uh, he, he did this, uh, let's see here, this is Adrian Montana. Uh, what can I do to restore the paint to this former glowy cut polished buff wax? After a quick wash, whitest stuff has gone, but the paint is still dull. Car was resprayed about two years ago, but it was left in the sun and neglected by previous owner. But I just want to show that it yeah. is pretty messed up here. That looks like single stage. Yeah, then look what, how, he, how he got it, though. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah. he did a good job. Yeah, he? it looks good to me. It's a pretty color. It's a bright blue, that's for sure. Yeah. I, one of the things when it comes to that, what I always tell people is uh, always use good abrasive technology. I mean, there's there's some good stuff on the market and there's some bad stuff on the market and try to stick with the good stuff. <laughs> and that article I wrote is true. Uh, I wrote this article years ago and it goes like this. The power in the after shot is created in the before shot. And think about it. Yeah. And, and, and what it says, if you read that article, is too often... Us guys and girls as detailers, what we do is we get something that's in really bad shape like that, and we get all excited, and we get busy, and we buff it all out. And you just did that, point yeah. hand or that Corvette. Yeah, and we didn't get the before shot. Well, now you can't go back in time. You know, maybe uh, you could get the time machine from the Big Bang. They, they bought that one <laughs> off, uh, what you call it, the, big, the time machine. But you, you can't go back in time and get that shot. So stop what you're doing, get the good before shot. And, and he's right. I actually did an engine detail on here. And um, it, it, it's not really a, a big project that I'm doing. The engine I'm doing, the paint correction is what the big, the big project is. So I just kind of went through it and did the engine detail. And when I was done, I was going, wow, that looks really good. I wish I would have taken a before shot. Then I could have done some marketing with it and showed you what I use. And instead, I got nothing. So Slacker. Hey, slacker. Yeah. Practice what yeah. you preach, man. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. All right, we have D Dog. I love the name, D Dog. <laughs> uh, let's get you back centered here. Uh, I need some help from the group cleaning. The rear window of the car was sitting for three years, and I can't get it to clean the fog from it. Any tricks? Yeah, you know what? Most people do when they try to clean uh, really nasty glass on the inside is they try to use a glass cleaner. Makes sense, you know, mm -hmm. spray it on, spread it around. But what you really want to do is get a, a glass polish. Um, Griot's makes one. Um, just It's not a polish for removing scratches. It's a polish for just cleaning the glass. But I also just use any clear coat safe compound or polish. You know, anything that's safe for clear coat, safe for glass. And get like a foam applicator, you know, little, little round ones, you know. Mm -hmm. and just get in there and contort yourself and hand polish all that glass. And then wipe that out and then use the glass cleaner. And the polish will cut through that baked on film. Okay. And um, but that's how I would tackle it. Now, what if it was like old tint? That's on there. Well, list. if it's old tint, you know, then that's an adhesive, and you're going to want to probably look at getting something like the 3M adhesive remover or some sort of citrus o orange citrus oil, and that's going to be a real pain in the butt. But if if this is for a customer car, you know, th it uh, didn't things, say. Yeah, things like this that are really hard to do. I mean, if it becomes really hard to do, the first thing you'd want to do is set your customer's expectations really low and explain to them, look, this is really hard to do, you know, because of the location of it. It's not like a side glass. It's in the back. You're going to have the rear deck. It's just not going to be easy to do. And one of the things I teach in my detailing classes is when people come to you as a professional detailer or something that's really hard to do, try to use wisdom and make a judgment call and maybe say, you know what? My schedule's really busy. I'd love to take this job on, but I just don't have the time for it. So I'm going to give you a phone number to my friend Bill or Jim. 
Jim is who we like to use, yeah. and send it on down the line. You know, just you know, you're going to spend so much time on it, you won't make any money. And if it's your own car, you're stuck with it. And you know, and or if you're really wanting to do the job, if you want to do the job, make sure that you let them know that it's going to take a little time. Yeah. Mm. So, so some you know, some things can be fixed, and some things just are so hard to fix that if you're doing this for money, it, it, the difference between a professional and a and, and a newbie. Is a professional sometimes just knows what to let us let go by, as I like to say, let someone else have the blessing. Ah, I see how you are. All right, let's go here. We have Chris Mints. I want Mints. I know I won't be able to get these cat scratches out, but what grit sanding process do I do go to through at least get the basics out? And yes, the cat is gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, this is a topic that Yancey and I cover here all the time, but the factory clear coat is only about two mils thin. Grab a post-it note before you start standing on this. Grab a post-it note, hold it between your fingers. A post-it note is about three mils, okay? So your brain can wrap around the fact that the clear coat's thinner than a post-it note, and then you're gonna go, wow, that's really thin. Okay, so, because here's what you don't wanna do. You don't wanna start sanding on that and start buffing on it and turn your pad over and see that beige or brown color, because that means it's a repaint. But here's what I would do if it was, if it was my car or a customer car, I would hit that with Trizac 5000 by machine, uh, use a eight millimeter free-spinning random orbital polish like a port cable and then pull your sanding marks out and then that's it. You can say that's the best we can do. And one of the things I teach people about stuff like this, before you start working on it, to, you know, to scare you a little bit, take it to a body shop and say, how much will it cost me to repaint this door? And they'll give you, you know, just ballpark, just how much? So they'll say $300, $500, okay? Now once you've got that number in your head, now it's really easy to go, yeah, you know, I'm just gonna hit it with 5,000, like Mike yeah, said, good. and buff out. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be the, the man of, you know, the god of wet sanding and try to wet sand that with 1500 grit and work your way out and compound it because I'll guarantee you, you're going to be buying a paint job. So. All right, now, is there a way that they might be able to... Mask all that? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, no. A big graphic sticker. No, I'm just saying, like, Dr. is there a way to tell how deep those scratches no, would be? Well, to me, those look like they're through uh, the clear coat and through the base coat and into the primer, but it's hard to tell with the picture. But, you know, Dr. I mean, if you catch your fingernail sometimes. Yeah, if you it's... catch your fingernail in there, it's too deep to pull out all the way. Um, Dr. Color Chip, we have a video up on our YouTube channel. Um, where he, we made five different videos, and one of them talks about the shoe polish method. Yeah. When you have a ton of defects like this, you just kind of run over it with the Dr. Color Chip, come back and wipe off the excess, and sometimes... sometimes It'll help, it won't make it perfect. It won't make it perfect, but sometimes all you can do is all you can do. So, you know, go with that. And again, look again at a paint job. I mean, as soon as you look at the price of the paint job, you're gonna go, you know, I can just live with it, so. Well, I wouldn't be able to live with that. I wouldn't live with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd be like, ah! They got a kitty cat steering wheel cover now. <laughs> <laughs> PETA, we did not ruin any animals for this post. Uh, let's go here. Saul Mag Magigan, uh, can these rims be polished that has a satin matte finish? Yeah, you know, I answer this question quite a bit working on, uh, no, not really. I mean, you can try. At, at, at some point, there's, you can't get any worse. A um, couple things though. Worst first that'll of all, do, it'll make it shiny. Yeah. First of all, wheel paint tends to be harder than car paint, okay? Uh, so it's really hard to get defects out. It's really hard to remove uh, spots or oxidation or scratches, you know, if you scratch it with the wheel brush. Um, but something like that, you know, the worst, you, you, you're not gonna make it any worse, but what I would do is I would um, get a, uh, a high quality compound and probably like microfiber and wrap your finger around it like this and then get in there and rub on the sides like this or you know break down if you've been looking for a great reason to buy a Rupes Nano other than that uh, find a real repair guy buy a set of wheels repaint them you know whatever you can do you know this might be a, a good uh, opportunity to try the Plasti Dip you know the swirling <laughs> Plasti Dip on it and repaint and repaint yeah, well you never know hey you never know yeah, powder coat and wheel paint like that real hard hard to work on all right, next one, we have Jesse Bouchard. And sorry about all my notifications popping up. But Which that's is better, a spray wax or a compound cream wax? Yeah. Well, it depends on what you're trying to do. Spray wax is a maintenance product, you know, it's for a finish in good shape. A compound cream wax. I think he's meaning probably like a, a canned wax. Canned wax, yeah. Uh, like okay. a sovereign well, or... You know, what's interesting about that, and I, over the years I've talked to a lot of chemists and 
and here, here's what I think, here's what I think, and here's what I think most people think if they think that deep about it. But to take a wax and make it a liquid, it would seem like it would take some solvent, something that's going to emulsify and hold that wax product in a suspension. But good chemists that I know really well personally have always told me that it takes more solvents to make a paste wax than a liquid wax. No, I could understand that. It, it seems like it'd be the opposite, because you know, to make something a liquid, you'd have to use solvent to uh, liquefy it. But you have to make, to me, I see it as if it's a, a solid, you have to put more stuff to make it combine. Yeah, but as to your question, it's, it, it's a pretty open question, and it really depends on what you're trying to do. Spray wax is a maintenance product, okay, so it's something in good shape. Uh, a paste wax, you're going to have more, whatever the protection ingredients are, there's going to be more of them in that. More condensed, you would say? Yeah, just more solids, more, 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 more of the actual uh, protection ingredients, whatever they may be. Okay, that makes sense. So, that makes sense. I, and you know, I've always said I'm the biggest fan of the uh, Mother's California <laughs> Gold Brazilian Carnuba Wax because it comes in a can about this big. So you can put it like a five and a half inch pad on your porter cable, just boom, boom, put it in there, boop the throttle and machine apply a paste wax. I, I try not to do anything by hand unless I have to. Yeah, Mike, he, he, he tries not to. It's just, you know, the machine always outperforms the human. Watch that the Terminator. True. That is true. <laughs> Watch the Terminator. <laughs> All right, we have Bobby here, Kogsky. Any suggestions, what can I use to get rid of the grime on these caps? Thank you in advance. It's probably those plastic wheel covers you know um stuff like that uh, the first thing you do is just pick an established wheel cleaner which i'm sure you've already tried if that didn't get it off then you're gonna have to go in there and somehow mechanically you know is he talking around the, the yeah i'm uh, thinking wow. he's probably already put some stuff it might already be baked into yeah. the plastic you know the, the the best wheel cleaner i've ever used is the brand new sonax beast all right um uh, unleash the beast yes yeah, so unleash the beast to get the sonax beast it's it's uh, non-acid so it's you know it's, it's safe and you may want to let it dwell on there a little bit and then agitate it. Other than that, you know, the, another way to tackle that would be to use a one-step cleaner wax, you know. Go in there, work by hand, and gently ab abrade that stuff off. I can't really tell what that it's is. A if that's, it's a Kia. Yeah. It, it could be, and I'm not, I'm not recommending this. Okay. <laughs> Disclaimer. 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 I'm not recommending this, but I've, I've cleaned a lot of stuff in my life with easy off oven cleaner. It'll eat anything off of anything <laughs> okay i used um, to use it for engine compartments disclaimer. when i want to clean an engine compartment you know but yeah, it's, when you pull it's a motor. lie it'll dissolve just about anything yeah. but Even it, it may dull the plastic or the paint down so you don't want to really try that but that's pretty bad you know i've done a couple wheels in the last year like that though and all i really did is i just kept hitting it with the sonax keep hitting just it with let the sonax. it eat and layer off you really need to do is get a um a, a wheel woolly brush I got oh so you can put bucket. some so yeah. you can oh here let me this Grab right. it, I'll show you. Everybody should have, there's like a couple brushes that everybody, sh every detail should have. And one of them is the, the, the big, the big uh, wool, wool style. It has like a nylon handle and you can really scrub hard with that thing, you know, if, when you have really neglected wheels like that. Yeah, this one. Yep, so get your, uh, get your um, Sonax wool cleaner. Then see what you can do is you can, I mean, you can, you can really, push hard with this thing. This thing bends. So you're getting the leverage. Yeah, but it, you, won't, you won't break it. And uh, but something like this in a good wheel cleaner is what I would try first. Work from the least to the most aggressive. Yeah. One, one time I cleaned a set of Mercedes Benz wheels. I think I washed them three or four times with Sonax wheel cleaner, with all the brushes, and there was still this brake dust that was just embedded on or impacted onto the nooks and crannies of the wheel. And this is the first time I ever used the um, G Technic C5 wheel armor. And um, I was kind of disappointed I couldn't get them perfect because I wanted to put the coating on the wheels. Okay. And I went to put the coating on the wheels and the coating dissolved what I couldn't remove. So that told me the, the solvents that were huh. um, embodied in the coating were pretty nasty <laughs> you know, themselves and they dissolved everything off there. And uh, it really cleaned up nice. So do what you can and then maybe grab a solvent and try different solvents. All right. Next question. You know, a real safe solvent for some things would be like um, a lady's fingernail polish remover. It's a real safe version of acetone. Okay. Uh, we have TJ Hancock here not coming out, and this looks like water etching on glass. It does. Um, At least it looks like that glass. That looks like a simple fix to me. I just need the right tools and the Is right products or and the right pads. No, actually. I, I, Is that paint? 
I can't tell if that's paint I or can't not. Can't paint or glass. Can't uh, tell. Um, I thought it was glass, but now I look at it, it's looking more like paint. Yeah, if that's if those are water spots on paint, that's really horrific. What you know, I wrote this article, and everybody should Google this, because because when because I've in my life I've spent a lot of time answering questions about water spots, water spots on paint, water spots on plastic, on matte finishes, on glass, and the first thing I like to do is put everybody's attention not on the problem but the source of the problem, and ask yourself. What the heck is in the water that can do <laughs> this kind of damage? Air, right? I don't know if I want to take a shower in it. Look what it's doing <laughs> to the surface here. But, um, you know, again, to me, that looks like something, a quality compound and uh, maybe a microfiber pad on something like the melee or the, the one of the beast tools, you know, a gear-driven tool or a rotary. Would you suggest maybe trying even like a water spot remover? Because I know that we have a couple of water spot removers. You know, there's some good water spot removers out there, but the problem is, is even if they'll remove the visual appearance of the spot, that, that, well, that surface is still going to need to be mechanically polished to get it right. So you might as well just go right to yeah, the mechanical I mean, it's, polish. Look at that. That's, that's hammered. You know, we, if, if that is glass, we sell a glass polish in the Blackfire line that works really good. I mean, it's, you cannot use it on paint. It is... It's so abrasive, but it won't hurt glass, and it's called uh, Blackfire Water Spot Remover. I'm going to use it on this vet, you know. I'm trying uh, to figure I'm out. I'm going to coat these uh, windows on this vet. Uh, oh, okay, that was on the hood. Yeah, so it's hard to tell from the picture, but I see the reflection of the ceiling overhead. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> well, he, in the comments, he, he uh, posted uh, um, the front. It's off of a BMW. Gotcha. Uh, well, you know, what, right what, are you, what are you using for a polisher? You know, what's your tool of choice? Yeah, true. You know, uh, get it, you know look, you, there's, there's a number of things you can do. One, you can get more aggressive with your abrasive technology. You can get more aggressive with your pad. You can get more aggressive with your tool. And you can get more aggressive with your technique. More passes, more pressure. Um, but to me, that looks like something a, a quality compound should be, should able, be able to, to address. Okay. So. All right, next question. Cleaning door jams, what do you guys use? Like an APC, a quick detailer, or what? You know, um, my normal method for, 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 first of all, is I don't tend to clean a lot of, detail a lot of cars that are really horrible in the door jam area. It's not like it's been 30 years since someone ever cleaned them. <laughs> something like this, and I'll guarantee the door jams here are dirty, but they're not like. They're like dusty. That. Yeah, they're dusty. So here's what I do. As after I wash the car and I've dried the car up with whatever I'm using for a drying chamois, by the time I'm done with at least one of them, it's wet. I just go through and wipe everything out just as a cleaner. So to get it clean, I spray a little Sonax glass cleaner in there, wipe them down, and then come back with, you know, any quality spray wax. Like Sonax, I'm not trying to do a big push on Sonax, but they're brilliant shine detailer. Yeah. It's a really nice product. Um, if you really want to go nuts, use an AIO. You know, machine, get yourself a Flex Pixie, machine polish all the paint and the door jams, or at least what you can reach by hand or by machine, and that'll really clean it up. I like this too. Um, Everett comes in. Does anyone ceramic coat the door jams like the rest of the car? Um, I don't go that nuts on myself. I mean, here's the deal. Like, for example, this Corvette here, just doing the whole car is going to take a lot of time. Ceramic coating the door jams, sure you could do it, but it's not going to get wet. In the, it's, it's just not going to be that big of an issue as long as you just clean them and put anything on there. Just, you know, again, a, a quality spray wax from Mothers or Meguiar's, you know, an instant detail. Yeah, because it's not in the direct. Out. It's not out in the sun. Yeah. It's not in but all the But, hey, water. if you want to work for free or cheap and you want to coat door jams and hood jams and trunk lid jams, go for it. Hey, you never I mean, know. That might be even a good way to sell I'd somebody aren't down. coating. Call it good. I'll even do your door jams. Uh, all right, let's go here. We have Boris LV. Question to the pros. Are you pro, Mike? No, I'm new. You're an amateur? I'm a, new, I'm a perpetual student is the term I like to use. Oh, uh, okay. How do I remove the blue jeans color marks and keep clean and protect those white seats? 2017 Tesla S. Leather is very soft and thin. Thank that you in advance. That question comes up all the time. Um, I know. That's why I got it for you. Yeah. Uh, See, I'm not being too mean. I'm giving you some loaded ones. Again, here, one. I, I, no one likes this answer. The first thing I do, if a customer were to bring me that car, I'd first lower their expectations. I may not be able to fix this. You know, I'll try. You know, they'll say, oh, yeah, I can get that because you might be able to fix yeah. it. The problem is, is that right blue here. indigo ink in the denim yeah, is right impacted onto and into the surface. 
and now you're left with chemicals and scrubbing to try to alter it and change it, and sometimes you just can't get it all. Um, but always use the least aggressive product to get the job done. And a couple things I've heard to use is, believe it or not, is hairspray. Huh. Like Aquanet hairspray. You can buy it for like three bucks a can at CVS or Walmart. Maybe because it's liquid, it goes in and it pulls it out. Some kind of solvent in there. That, but you, I've heard that. I've never tried it, but I've heard that for decades that that works. Um, you know, the Mr. Clean... Um, oh, the soft scrubs. Soft scrubs. Those actually have abrasives in them. So they're going to abrade the surface now. On some surfaces, you could get away with it. It won't alter the effect. On other surfaces, if you abrade it, you're going to see right where you abraded it. So that's something you'd want to test on a on a, something underneath <laughs> underneath the seat, you know, and get a good light down there and see what it did. But you're kind of there's. I think um, Leatherik makes an ink remover. Um, I, I could be wrong on the brand. It could be um, another leather company has an ink remover. I have tried it, and here's what it did. It improved it, didn't remove it. So sometimes you just can't fix everything. Yeah, That's why you always want to start by lowering your customer's expectations and, and don't brag that you can fix everything because some things just can't be fixed. Another option would be is to get some fresh jeans and rub them all over the seat <laughs> and add more blue, kind of like being an artist, an art, oh, artiste. Put a pattern in. Yeah, put a pattern of blue all over the seats, you know, and then charge them for it. I remember when I was back in high school, that, now that you brought up the <laughs> hairspray and stuff, yeah. um, back in the 80s. You may that's... want to adjust the camera. I'm going to stand for a second. Here. All right. Um, that seat is really uncomfortable. The, uh, we were in science, and, you know, all back in my day, all the girls, you know, they had hair out to here. Well, yeah, yeah. I can't even fit it in. Where yeah, am I at? back in the 80s. 80s, you know, the, the, the headbanger stuff. And he was had them bring in one of their cans. It was Aquanet. Yeah. And he was sitting there reading through it, and he was like, "Do you know that this is one ingredient away from super glue? <laughs> if he just add one ingredient in there, it'd been super glue." Wow. Huh. So yeah. All right. Hairspray. There you go. Okay, let's go here. Oh man, I'm like, that's how my see all these popping things up. That is how my day goes all day long. Okay, we have Chris Kervach. Uh, how do you guys clean the small pebbles, which are a pain in the butt, to get between the floor panels and the emblems? The gap is way too small for any of my brushes. Yeah, that's uh, pebble textured plastics, what that's called. No, I think he's talking about right here. Oh, into there? Yeah. Uh, you know, you just... Toothpick? Fine, you know, toothpick, fine, fine uh, oh, brushes. We have, we have those little... Uh, do we still have those little cotton swabs that are flat? We, we do. Those are in the S100 line. That, that's what they are. Yeah, but those are pretty thick. Uh, I don't think that would get into this Griot's Garage. Um, <laughs> you step back this Griot's Garage touch-up paint brush would get in there. It's really tiny. I don't know. It seems like you could get a, um, a tooth some kind of you know nylon brush and get in there and just agitate it. Or maybe like a credit card, or depending on how thick it is. Something. I don't know. You know, uh, Meguiar's used to sell this... Uh, uh, way back in the early 200s, they came out with a complete brush line. I still have a couple. There's one over in their drawer where it has three different places with the brush, and one is really thin. And you, instead of like a thick like toothbrush, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it was really th just like a single row of bristles that were very thin and very hard, so you could get into places like that. And that's why I still have mine today. I keep them around because they're functional. They're functional. I don't know. Uh, here's what I would do. First thing I'd do is I'd hook up a Tornador black <laughs> blowout gun. I'd blow it out. Go nuts with that thing. I think that'd work. Or Sloth just even brush. an air squirter, you know, just get compressed air and squirt it in there, see if that works. I'm going to have to look at it. We have a bunch of people in here is saying floss brush. I've never seen a floss brush. Is there, those, those little brushes that are like a... <gasps> a I know placard. what they are. Yeah, the little... Yeah. I know it. Yeah, that yeah. would actually work because yeah. some of them have a little tip on the back end. Yeah, they got a little tip for cleaning your teeth, so that would probably work. Yep. Good, good, good. I don't know. I got a torn door black. That's what I would try. Okay, here we go again. Uh, we have Kamel, 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 Kamal, Kamal. Uh, hello, everyone. My black car was polished and then protected with ceramic coating, Geon, by a professional a few months ago. I'm really happy with the results. Since then, I only wash it with neutral pH yep. shampoo. Good boy. Or girl, I don't know what you are. I read this on the forum this morning. Uh, did you really? Yeah. Is it possible to recommend to use a detailer like Sonic Spring the Shine Detailer on top of a ceramic coating, especially with the finishing bry drying process? Well, here's the deal. The, the, this question comes up a lot. I, I got an article. I'm trying to think what the topic is. You know, um, But what a lot of people do is they ask, now that I've got a ceramic coating in my car, can I put a wax or a sealant or put something on it? 
and you can. There's there's no. Remember we've talked about the yeah, uh, wax no police. Yep. There's no law that says you can't. But usually when you have a coating put onto your car's paint, you want the benefits and the features of the coating. When you start putting other things on there, other things don't have all the benefits and features of coating. So you're you're getting less for your money, less for your efforts than just leaving the coating alone. The exception would be products like that. The, the Brilliant Shine Detailer, uh, Sonex really has some good chemists. They make some good products. And one of the things that does is creates a super hydrophobic surface like a coating. So you're not going to lose anything by using it. And when I read your comments in the forums, you already said you really like using it. So one of my famous quotes is find you, something you, you like, like and use, use it, it often. often. <laughs> it, you know, the, 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 the big, most important thing is to find something you like. Once you do it, then it's a matter of just using it. And if you're using it as a drying aid, then I'd say you've got a pretty good combination there as a way to take care of your car. The next most important thing is always make sure your towels are clean, soft, and uncontaminated. Anything with a nap can get contaminants in it. And that's why you always want to feel them with your hand because a lot of times your hand can feel contaminants that your eyes can't see. And if you don't do that and there's a little contaminant embedded in there and you're, whatever their towel is and you're drying that Washing beautiful paint in your car, here's what I always tell people. It takes hours to buff out a car, takes seconds to put scratches in. So inspect your towels. I'd say that's the most important article I've ever written in my entire life is, is called How and Why to Inspect Your Microfiber Towels. Type that into Skynet and add my name, Mike Phillips, it'll pull right up. Read the article, look at the pictures, watch the video. But that's one thing that, I mean, I'm glad that he is, uh, Kamel, is actually taking incentive to take care of his coating. Yes. A lot of people, oh, I got a coating. I don't need to do anything. Uh, yeah. That coating's bulletproof. Yeah, there's no uh, such thing as an invisible force field. I had an idea for a product years and years and years ago. If anybody can ever remember this TV show called I Dream of Genie. I do. I okay, that. so uh, what it was was Major Anthony Nelson, an astronaut, landed in his spaceship on the beach here in Florida somewhere, and, or Hawaii, wherever it was. I think it was Hawaii. And he found this bottle in sand, he opened it, and this genie came out, and they made a TV sitcom out of it, and genie was always, you know, his kind of quasi-girlfriend, but she was a real genie. Well, I came up with this idea where you, uh, in, in the show, you would take the lid off and the smoke would come out and it would turn into the genie. I wanted to see something like that, only the smoke come out, encase the car, did its magic, went back in the bottle, and when you're done, the car looked beautiful. That's the part product I want, the yeah, genie I, I, in a bottle. I, I think the EPA might have something <laughs> to say about that. So, but okay, it, yeah. moving right Sonex makes good stuff. Me and Yancey have both been to uh, Newburgh, Germany at the Sonax plant, and uh, it's huge. Big. It's huge. It's a huge complex. They have their own restaurants at the Chef. company and their own chefs just to feed their staff. When I left McGuire's, they had five chemists. When we were in Germany, they had 25 chemists yeah. at Sonex, and Rob McCrary says there's over 30 now. Yeah. So that just gives you an idea how big they are. They're huge in Europe. You know, we they're Americans, the Maguires of Europe. Yeah, they're the Maguires or the mothers of Europe. They're or both. They're a big company, <laughs> and they focus a lot on um, uh, commercial car washing. So, um, so you know, a lot of their products are tested in real world. And they have their own car wash right they, there. Yeah, <laughs> at the factory they got their own tunnel car wash where they test everything. But Sonax makes good stuff. Okay, let's go to here. Let's go to Stephen Taylor. Are you from Aerosmith? Uh, question, friend of mine left a vehicle sitting under a pine tree for a good while. Nothing we use will bring it off. Any ideas? And this is, let me bring this up just a little okay, bit. Okay, so when trees... That's hammered. Yeah, when trees leave sap, the, the thing is, is different trees or plants have different types of sap, and it takes different things to dissolve them. So some, some plants emit a, a sap that can be dissolved with water. Pretty simple but some take a real solvent. So some of the more popular solvents that people try to break down pine sap are um, uh, paint thinner, a WD-40, believe it or not. I've always read, I've never tried it, but I've heard uh, a lot of people have had really good luck with WD-40 as a wonder solvent. <laughs> yeah, it fixes anything like duct tape. Uh, paint thinner, um, what's another solvent for, um, maybe mineral spirits or lacquer thinner, but look for some things in the paint industry. More of like an oilish kind of? Yeah. Not, in slow, more of a, not an a, a, acetone. Not acetone. Or acetone bone, but more no. of an oil side uh, of stuff. Uh, what's, what's, what's a, more of a slow drying solvent? And the, the key with stuff like this is what most people do is they make the mistake of, you know, somehow getting the product onto the, onto the sap and then wiping it. And, 
there was no time for the solvent to dwell. So what I would do is I would dampen a cloth with a solvent, hold it against the section for only like 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and then wipe and see if it comes off. Um, you don't want to go too much longer than that because you may find out that the solvent is softening the paint. And yeah. I've done that before too. Um, but there's, we carry a slew of, uh, uh, you like that word, a slew? A slew. A plethora. Ooh, big word. Sap again. removers um, by big name brands like Stoner. And you've already, again, here, here's a case where you've got a company that's hired a chemist that knows what they're doing, and they've made this product that's an aerosol. You could spray it on. Oh, that's another people that are going to be here. David Gutierrez from 303. I don't yeah, and it. spray it on and let it dwell a little bit, and then, you know, just attack it. And th that's what I would try, though. I'd, I'd probably first start trying some of the more established uh, sap removers like Stoner. A uh, car pro makes a really good one. Uh, you know what I would do? 3D. You know how I'd fix it? How? Chainsaw. Chainsaw. <laughs> Cut <laughs> like the tree it. down. The cat's uh, gone, the tree's gone. <laughs> but th that's going to take patience is what that's going to take. But dwell, remember, dwell time is going to be your friend so the solvent can penetrate and do its magic, which is dissolving the sap like that. Okay. Moving right along. Dun, dun, dun. Oops. Uh, let's get rid of that. Oh, what did I do here? Oh, this one. This one comes up. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I got like 10 zillion things popping up. Really? Come on, people. Go away. King Ranch. Do we, do we have a resident King Ranch leather expert? I've always tried to avoid <sighs> these, but a friend needs help. They are out of, they feel very dry and almost feel like 1500 grit sandpaper. Wow. I'm using saddle soap and water. Any advice? Well, the first thing I would do is I would go to the manufacturer um, I always hate to say that word, manufacturer or Ford. Ford used to sell their own line of products to fix that. Now, Ford quit making that, that type of leather interior because of all the problems it caused with everybody. Well, it's doing real leather, right? Stuff. Yeah, it's real. It's uh, real cow. It's real dead cow. And, um, but because you have so many people out there that are the lowest common denominator among us, you're not the sharpest tool in the shed. And you end up with people doing things like putting armor all on them, which darkens them, and they never come back from that. But they just quit making it. So instead of trying to educate the public on how to fix things, just don't make it anymore because it's really hard to work on. But I would, I would try to find the product that Ford actually made and recommended for use on that because you can't beat the manufacturer. After that, um, I'm not really known as Mike Phillips, the leather cleaner. I'm kind of known as Mike Phillips, the paint polisher. So this is not in my wheelhouse, so to speak. But um, I've been told that in our Pinnacle Black label line, mm -hmm. I think if you go up to Auto Geek on the page, it says right on there, can be the cleaners. Pinnacle Black label leather cleaner. It looks like water. It's very thin, but it can be used on this type of leather. But that leather, if you say it's rough to the touch, even if you got it clean, it's never going to look good. Yeah, I it, mean, this is an update. This is J.R. Moore. He, as I was reading down through the comments, what do you call it? He did post an update. It's definitely a big improvement, yeah. as you can see there. But well, it's put something on there that also darkened it. Yeah. You know. Then I, and I to me that, that looks better than before. I mean, I take yeah. that. Yeah. Then we had another guy on here. This was Aaron Lee. Those that look he, good. He did, that was his before and after, and uh, it, it can be done, there, people. Yeah, there's, I'm sure there's products out there, but that's not really my area of expertise, so I'm willing to let anybody else make a recommendation on that. <laughs> and, and he punts. And, and, <laughs> yeah, I punt. And, and see, now, so, and here again, Jim. <laughs> putting, uh, putting my own philosophy into practice, if someone showed up here outside of Auto Geek with leather that looked like that and said, hey, can you fix it? You know, I'd be like, first thing I'd do is I'd look at the paint. Well, you know, if the interior looks like crap, How's the paint look? And I bet it looks like crap too. So tell you what, I'll do the outside and I'll let Jim <laughs> down the road have the interior. My schedule's full. Uh, I only can fit in the outside. <laughs> <laughs> I can only fit in the outside of the car. You know, there's, you know, just again, there's there's two kinds of detailing. It's either yours or it's, you know someone that's close to you, family, friend, coworkers. So you're doing that, or you're doing this for money. And when you're doing it for money, sometimes what the most expedient thing to do is just learn what to turn down, like. Kenny Rogers, no one to hold them, no, no, no one to fold them, no one to walk away. Let someone else we should have make a the song blessing. Like, we should make a song like that. All right, here we. This is the last <laughs> question from Detailing 101. Then I'm going to go through and answer some of. The, I mean, get pull up some of these questions that people have been answering in the comments over here. Uh, this is Joe Williams. Question: Is waterless wash spray, waterless wash spray, really safe to use? 
When is it too dirty to use the stuff, got some, and want to be lazy, but don't want to do That's it That's a good question. After. We've covered that in videos we made, yeah. but, you know, common sense It comes is, up a lot. That's the only reason yeah, why I brought it up. Common sense. Look, if it looks dirty, take it to a coin op. You know, if you, if you do not have the ability to drag a hose and bucket out where you live, okay, running water, you, most people would still have the option to go to a coin op, you know, throw three dollars worth of quarters in there and use their water and don't risk it with a water wash. There's nothing trumps running water for cleaning dirty cars. True. Sure. Nothing. True. Sure. So, but I, I, I use, I'm gonna use a water wash on here. I'm gonna use Sonax glass cleaner. You know, it's my favorite water wash. If it, look, think, think about it. If it'll leave glass streak free, that means no residue. And that's what I want because I'm gonna clay it and buff it out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to leave any shine agents or carnauba or silica. I don't, leave, I don't Most of your water washes, if you look at them carefully, they clean and make the paint look good. Well, I don't want the part that makes the paint look good. I'm getting ready to buff it out. So people ask me all the time, why do you use so nice glass cleaner? Because all it does is clean well. Mm -hmm. I'll take care of the rest on my own, so. Okay. All right, so let's go into some of your questions since this whole sure. thing is about questions and so forth. Oh, not, I'm gonna, some of them aren't gonna be questions. Here's uh, Morgan who's saying hello, everyone. Uh, we have Gaston Alfonso. Hey, hello, how's it Mike. going, Gaston? I met him down in Argentina when I taught a class down there uh, with uh, Monster Detailing. Okay. Alan Lebrugier and uh, Mother's Products sponsored that. All right, we have Mike's Auto Detailing, hello. We have Jesse Hinman. He's the one that was up in Lake Country, wasn't he? Doesn't he have the Chevelle? I think so, wife? yeah. I think so. Uh, he's Mikey! Then we have Brad Cooper. What's up, guys? Hey, uh, Brad. We have Thomas Kirby. Wow, 44th. Yes, Kirby. We, we're getting up there. Uh, we have <laughs> Fizal. I'm not even going to try the rest of your name. Following from Mauritius Island. I, I want to go where he's Mercer at. Mercer Island, huh? Mar Mar Mauritius. 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 Mar Mauritius. Is that how you say it? I don't know. All right. We're, I know where it's guessing. at, though. All right, we have Adrian. Howdy, guys. Neil White. Hey, everyone. <laughs> and he says enormous is what we should call it. Enormous. Uh, oh, here we go. Jamie Jack, first question. Can we reuse a pad if it has paint color transfer? Yeah, just wash it. Ain't going to hurt nothing. I do it all the time. I got articles showing uh, all the cars that we end up buffing out down here with single-stage paint. And I showed the pictures of all the pads with pigment in them. Go through the washer, go through the dryer come out kind of clean, but they still got the color in, but mm -hmm. I, I don't throw them away, I keep on using them. Same thing with the cloth. If I got a cloth and I wipe off uh, something that's got pigment in it, and I wash it, I inspect it, if it feels soft to the touch, I don't throw it away, I keep on using it. Keep on keeping on. Yeah. All right, we have Danielle Kinder, see y'all at Southern Detailers Conference, Mike. Daniel Hope you'll be there yeah. as well, Yancey. I'm I don't teaching know uh, five classes at the Southern Detailers Conference. Glass polishing, wet sanding, tire coatings, uh, boat detailing, which will include machine sanding and ceramic coatings, and um, what's the other one? Oh, windshield uh, production detailing. Production. Yeah, I'll be doing glass polishing, yep. subsurface. So oh. five good topics, and then I'm the first guest speaker on the stage at Saturday morning at 10 a.m. So bring your apples. <laughs> yeah, tomatoes and eggs. <laughs> All I'm right, let I'm back to standing again. This, this, you know, this seat we have out here. Let me show everybody. Of course it doesn't, it's no good. It's a, a Ford. Ford. <laughs> it's a Ford <laughs> chair. Sorry, all you Ford you lovers. Get a Mopar chair out here. Or something. There, there you go. Hey, I'll take that. All right, you're standing? Uh, for now. Yeah. All right, just let me know when you go to sit <laughs> again. All right, we have, I want to say Sal, I don't know how to, what, what your little thing is there. What's your favorite paint gauge? Your favorite paint gauge, Mike. Make and model, please. Uh, at this time, you know, I'm going to go with the DeFelsco. Anything by DeFelsco. I like the fact that they're American made. Um, they cost more, but they do more. Um, I think all of them have built in circuits that adjust for ambient temperature, so they're accurate. They're, they're probably the, one of the most accurate. And, th and when you're working with something that's really thin, accuracy is really important. Yeah, true. So, um, <laughs> I, you know, I, and I, I don't want to get into a, a, a huge political discussion of so many things that are made in China in knockoffs, but there's so many paint gauges that are knockoffs of American stuff, and I like the Del Fesco. So. Dun, 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 dun. 
I was yeah. waiting for the flag. I've had in. I've had my writing knocked off all my life, and I get I get really tired. I see people take what I've written and they they post it and share it somewhere, but they never give credit to where they got it. So it looks like they wrote it, but they didn't. I did it. So I know what it feels like to be ripped off by other people. So I'd, I don't like to see it happen to anybody. Okay. Uh, we have Michael. My, he's my Dodge buddy up in Canada. And update on my charger. It, it'll be in Orlando on the 23rd. Then hopefully a couple days later, it'll be in Fort Pierce and in my possession. So yes, it's almost <laughs> here. So hello, Michael. Uh, he has the Hellcat and he's through his 500, uh, Hellcat Durango and he's through his 500 break-in. Gotcha. Uh, so so the streets in Canada are not safe <laughs> anymore. Let's put it that way. Uh, Neil White, now that is quite a lineup. We probably missed a couple when we're going through all the things, but you can go up on Mike's detail. Uh, it's uh, on the IDA Facebook page. So on the, uh, for, no, for your class? Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. On your, oh, okay. Well, I was going to say, they, I was just going to send them into your Facebook page because you posted all of them on there. Did for I? the class. Yeah, yeah. All, all, the, all the people coming to the class. I don't class. think I did. No, I put it on the IDA Facebook group. I, I thought I saw it. And it's on the page. forum. Hey, maybe I put it on my own or, Facebook page. Or <laughs> if not, I should. <laughs> I, have <laughs> a news, I have a newsletter going out tomorrow. I was going to say, that it'll be in that. there. If but you, yeah, I have a lineup of 10 people, so... If you pull it up, there's a there's a thread on the forum called Shock and Awe. All right, hold on. Let me... Uh, and it, you could run down the names of everybody. It's really a great collection of guys, and uh, it's going to be a, f a fabulous class. They all are. They, this class, every class buffs out, details um, 12 cars minimum the first two days. 12 cars. There will be zero chairs in here. It'll just be full of cars and tools. And... There's different kinds of teaching styles, and I get that. I used to be the guy that had the PowerPoint and had you sit in a chair, and we would look at a tool on a, and a picture of a tool on the wall, and I would talk about it. And what I found works better is to take you over to the car, put that tool in your hands, do a demo, explain how it works, and turn you loose on it, and then watch you and correct if you need it, correct your technique. And I just find the people, the kind of people that are attracted to car detailing are also the kind of people that learn better by doing than sitting in a chair listening to me talk for hours. And the other problem with doing chairs and tables in my classroom is we, we go through so many tools, there's no time to sit in a chair or you won't get to work on one of the tools, you know? So, we, we do it all. In fact, I've, one of the things I've done uh, in the last couple years is I've added a dedicated rotary polisher or rotary buffer class session. So you come in and you get a buff out of car with a rotary, you know, and this it's the last class on Saturday. So you've used all the Orville's, short stroke, long stroke, Rupes, Griot's, Flex, the primary Porter Cable, the primary tools in our industry on 10 cars, sometimes 11 or 12. And then the last part of Saturday, we, I bring in usually things like big trucks, and I let you guys attack them using a rotary. And that gets you trained up for the next day of wet sanding, because after you're done wet sanding, you're going to need a rotary to pull your sanding marks out. So there's always a method to my madness when I teach my class. Everything's done on purpose for a great experience for you. Okay, let's go so, down this. Here's Tony Pando. Tony Pando, Dr. Color Chip. Uh, then we have... I'm showing 303 because we're going to be using 303 on the cars. Did Chris There's, ever get back with you? Uh, Chris can't make it, but okay. I'll, be, I'll be teaching it for him. There's Chris West. He'll, he won't be here, but I'll be teaching. There's IGL products. There's uh, Udos. Where's your people? Keep on going down. Those, those are all stuff that's in the class. It's all staged and ready I know, to go. I'm, I was trying Here's to some of the cars that are going to be in the class. A bunch of straight Hey, this rods. is ZZ is Top showing up? This is, yeah, ZZ Top car. And those are all base coats. There's your coats. car right there. This is Mike's that, new whip right yeah. there. That's a coworker's car. That's she, it. That's his car. Yeah. There's another coworker's car. Yeah. Keep right. on going. There's our wet. There's one of our wet sanding cars. That's a real street rod with a real custom paint job that my class gets the wet sand. Okay. So. And here comes the people. Okay, we have Chris Rakana from Dr. Beasley. Did I say that right? Yeah, I think so. Risk. Mike Sorante from Flex. Serene. Yeah. Mike or Serene. Oh, He's with Ego and Skill and Flex. All right. So. Steve Persia. He's the IGL trainer. And the one and only David Gutierrez. The chemist from 303 to explain how the new graphene nano spray coating works, and we're going to be using it. And also DJ Goodson. I think he's their in-house detailer. So 
when you're, if you're developing products, you need a guy that goes out in the garage and uses them to give the chemists feedback. So um, they've both taken my class before. We've got Dylan Von Kleist and Jason Brennan, both great guys in the industry. And yes, that is an industry he did change from another company. He is, he is now new. He recently with... left Lake Country, in case nobody knows. And Jason's a great guy. He's got a, a very rich background in boat detailing. So yes. uh, really good with the rotary, you know. Okay, and we have Rod, Rod Kraft. Kraft. Rod Kraft, he's one of these the guys. The man, the myth, the I legend. Always, he, I would say he, he's not, he has more talent in his pinky than anybody else I know. But he's, 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 here's one of the cool things. He's worked at the OEM level, so down on the polishing decks of car manufacturing assembly lines. So he's seen the side of the industry a lot of people never get to see, but he's, he's also a professional detailer. So he's not just like a desk jockey, but he's, he's really good with the uh, Griot's products. He's yeah, a real asset guy. to their team. Another Dodge guy, too. Yeah. Awesome. There's another Dodge guy, yeah. Okay, then we have Tony Pando, which you've already said, and then, then Jim Lefebvre. Jim Lefebvre from Dr. Beasley's. And we've got a couple of matte finished cars that will be here for that. All right, so that's the rest of that. Yeah. Let's go back to here. It'll be a very good class. It will be a very good class. So, yes, there will be quite a few people here. So, if you haven't. And then I do SV testing on Monday. I do that as a professional courtesy to anybody that takes my class primarily. I mean, if you've already flown out here to Stewart, Florida, and you want to join the IDA and get SV tested, I know it's on a Monday, but all you got to do is, you know, make your plane leave the next day, one more night at a hotel, and you can come down and I'll have this whole garage set up to do SV testing. Okay, let me get through some of these. So try to stay on, on topic. Okay, uh, we got Sol Slatic. Salsa addict. I'm going to say salsa addict is what that is. What he's trying to say. What OPM do you use on a DA when compounding, polishing, and applying wax? Is the answer the same for a microfiber pad and a foam pad? Oh, what OPM? Yeah. Um, well, here's here's which one. That's a good question, actually. And I, I always like to give due credit where I learn things from. So years and years and years ago, um, uh, I was watching Mike Pennington uh, machine apply with a porter cable a wax to a car. And he had that sucker turned up to about the four or five. And I says, isn't that kind of fast just to be spraying out of wax? And he goes, he says, I'm not, I don't, I'm not running it at that speed to work the product. It's just the pad will glide over the surface better at a little higher OPM. Yeah. So instead, otherwise it feels like it's dragging. dragging. You can test this out just to turn whatever polisher you want on one and put some wax or sealant on it and try to move it over the finish. It's like it's it's like you're moving the tool and it's lagging behind. Bring the speed up this a little bit more, and all of a sudden it's just gliding all over the place. So uh, what you want is just pad rotation. So, all right. I so have another. Uh, blah 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 blah. There was. We have Mike Al Angerstein. Um, is all the classes online or in person? The, what we were just talking about, <laughs> yeah. that's the only reason why I want to jump to this one real quick, is the ones that we were just talking about, all those guests, are the in-person classes. So we do these every week where yeah. you can tune in. But he has, what, three car classes and one boat class a year? Yeah, right now I do three three-day classes a year and one two-day boat class. And they're in person, and that's the only way you're going to actually physically get to use the tools and work on the cars. So, yeah. Okay. Um, let me go back to where we were at. And one of the cool things that I really like is my classes always sell out. So, uh, you know, get signed up before they got to say no. Where was I at? Man, you guys were busy on here. Uh, oh, okay. 50% uh, of the people that take my class aren't detailers. They're car enthusiasts. They come here to learn how to work on their, they got something cool in the garage. Yep. All right, John Vargo, maybe this is an inside thing with you. Hey, Mike, not detailing related, but has the truck found a home yet? Maybe the truck from your class that you guys did for your brother-in-law? Oh, yeah, it sold the next week. We, uh, we did this, I think it was a 1985 uh, Ford F-250. It was my father-in-law's truck. It, it didn't even run when they brought it here. We had to go out and put new batteries. Oh, well, you got to put new batteries in here. Hold on, hold on one second. You just, I just lost you. You just died. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, you got batteries. All right, hold on, hold on. On the fly. How about this? Time out. Um, you know what a great sports guy I am. Time you, out. kind sir, are crazy. I don't follow sports. I like to play them, but I don't follow them. All right, hold on. Dun, 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 dun. Quick change, quick change. Dun, 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 
your background. Okay, so uh, at my last three-day class, the class, I think they detailed 15 cars, and one of them, I like to bring in what I call a beater, and I teach beater detailing, beater detailing. And this truck was a beater. I just, and, and what the cool thing is about the truck is it's such a bad shape, you can't hurt it. But it's funny that whenever I bring in these beaters, they are usually the most popular vehicle out of all the cars that'll be here that people like to work on. But we brought in this um, 19, I think it was a 1985 Ford F-250, and um, it hadn't probably been washed or waxed in, since the time it was purchased. And it was really in bad shape. And I let the class attack it with rotary buffers, wool pads and compounds. And get this, we didn't even wash it. We didn't clay it or nothing. We just buffed it out. <laughs> we just went to town. It, we that to part of it the came operation. out so amazing, it sold the next week. So, yep. All right, let's go here. Sarah, uh, what's the best way to get pitting off of chrome rims? Uh, you can't really get pitting off chrome rims. You know, once what the pitting is, is what happens is a lot of people think chrome is impervious or Im impermeable, but it is actually permeable, it's porous. And what most people don't do is they don't clean their wheels good enough, especially the crevices, you know, the seams where the mm -hmm. spokes would be or whatever the design may be. They get the easy to clean area, but wherever dirt can get trapped, it gets trapped, it builds up, it becomes a film, it holds moisture in, the moisture goes in, gets behind the chrome layer, rusts the steel, the steel starts to expand as it's corroding, and it pops the chrome open. This is like how to build a better mousetrap. There's, yeah, there's <laughs> nothing you can do to fix it. Just clean it really well and stick a fork in it, call it done, kick it out the door. Okay, Neil White. Mike, would you ever take a government contract to compound polish F-35S? I guess that's a plane? It's a fighter jet. Um, to, I would... I, I might be interested in doing one to do it, mark it off the bucket list, but typically I'm not really interested in doing big stuff like that. I'll leave that to Joe Fernandez and Rennie Doyle. I, I really like just working on cool cars, you know. Big stuff like that is just grunt work, okay? Most of those guys doing the, the big aluminum planes, aluminum's really messy. If they're doing the big jets, you know, that's uh, they're using a one-step cleaner wax, you know, and it's just, you know, trying to buff underneath something for hours. It's, it's really, it's, I'll the do pictures the look cool, but <laughs> if you were there in person, it's really just grunt work. It's, it, the fun has gone about 10 minutes into after you've started. It's just Then it work. becomes reality. <laughs> it's reality. It's like, oh, my God, what did I sign up for? You know, I would take a 69 Chevelle that belongs to the pilot of that F-35 any day of the week. Okay, we have Patrice. Uh, hi from my shop in France. I'm taking a break to watch a legend. <laughs> Thank you for tuning hey, in. Thanks for France. tuning in. All right, and then we're, we're, this is when all the people from abroad are tuning in. Uh, Ange and Aaron Nicholson, sweet polisher there, Mike. Good I morning. I gave you from credit. New that, that's, my, uh, that's my friend Aaron that sent this to me. And, um, I'm afraid to ask what it costs you for shipping because this thing is heavy. And to ship to New Zealand, it ain't cheap. Right. You know, I, I, sent, uh, I sent Aaron a bunch of Blackfire One Step. And uh, the, I don't remember what it cost, but it wasn't cheap to send it there. But uh, I'm going to offer this to Rupes in uh, Colorado if they'd like to have this for the, like their lobby in a showcase. Yeah. So it is going to get a good home. Yeah, well, then best place to go is back to this home, you know, basically. Yeah. All right, let's go here. We have Martin Gallagher. Hello all from the UK. Good day. <laughs> uh, let's go. Kevin Beatty. Can you touch in Ultima Paint Guard Plus? You guys sell it. Have you ever used I don't think I've ever used that. I haven't really used a lot of the Ultima line. It's just for no reason. It's just, God, we have so many products, <laughs> it's hard to get to everything. Mike uses what's closest to his hand. Uh, da, 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 what is it has a strong uh, following, though. So, all right, Johnny Heartless. I don't know where this came from. <laughs> Let's throw you a question. You What's you involved with R and Ring, a complete clutch assembly in a 2002? Probably drive. Hey, uh, read the owner's manual. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, wrong channel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. You know, in my life, I have replaced so many clutches. But people wouldn't even think that. I've replaced clutches in five-ton dump trucks, Toyota Corollas, Spitfires, you know, muscle cars. Um, when I was growing up, um, once once you replace the clutch in someone's car, word travels. Yeah. Because it's really a pain to do. You know, you got to pull the transmission out. It's so much work, and it's it's really not that hard to actually put the clutch, the new components in, use a dowel, line it up, adjust the clutch. I'd say I'm an expert at all that stuff, but I haven't done that for years. But I've done two five-ton dump trucks for whatever that's worth. 
Okay, so. we have Philip here. I just did, I just discovered Cyclodual head polisher. Should I consider getting one for detailing? Um, you know, I, here, I, you know, I don't want to take anything away from the Cyclo. It's a really well-made tool. It's balanced. It's American-made. It's a great tool. But here's just what I've noticed: is usually when people are machine polishing, when you have the dual head Cyclo, you have to monitor two heads. When you have any other polisher, you're just really monitoring one head or one buffing pad. And there's so many modern uh, single head polishers out there that'll do everything a cycle will do and more. And, you know, I just think you'll have better luck. If it was me, I, you know, I always recommend to people either start out with a short stroke, a free spinning random orbital polisher like a Porter Cable or a Griot's G9. Um, and then from there, jump up to a gear driven like the Melee or any of the f tools Flex. in the then the Flex family called the Beast, the the Beast, the Super Beast, the Sea Beast, and then there's there's other tools out there like that. But okay. one of the things I'm going to be teaching at the Southern Detailers Conference is how to reduce your buffing time, and the way you do that is you get away from these free spinning tools and get to gear driven orbitals, so you don't got to mess with pad stalling and you power can get the job the detail. done. You know, you can power through a detail. Time is money. All right. Let's, speaking of time, we are in an hour and ten minutes. All right, T.J. Sands. Hello. I own Hughes Janus Custom Detailing. What is recommended product to buff windshield marring from windshield wipers? Go watch our other video. Yeah, go watch <laughs> other video. Sarah Glass, you're gonna need Sarah Glass, you're gonna need rayon pads from CarPro. Uh, CarPro makes Sarah Glass, they make the pads. You need an interface pad, and then you can do this with the orbital, but it'll be a lot faster with a rotary. And the one of the things I tell people is it's really hard. Here's, here's why it's hard. Can there I just walk going. over here? Yep, hold on, hold on one okay. second. Let me get you. Here's why it's hard. is usually when you're buffing out a car, you're, you're working on a horizontal panel, so you're buffing down, or a vertical panel, so you're pushing it away from you. But when you're working on a windshield, you know, you're holding it at an angle for hours, okay? Removing, I call this subsurface, so below the surface, subsurface glass polishing, removing wiper marks, scratches, and pits. And glass is very hard, so it's hard to buff, and it takes hours to do it. And what I've, I, you know, I always like to be real frank about this. What I find is most guys are just wussies. They can't even do it. They're just, you know, they're the, most people would take a hammer and break it and just call safety light and have it replaced. But there's um, sometimes you can't do that. And that's gonna, what, one question that we got, I mean, a repeative comment coming up. They're like, oh, I just break the window and get it out. But what if you have a 57 vet? And they we're going to have, have a, yeah, we're going to have a 1957 Corvette here next week. We're shooting a live video, how to take scratches out of glass on the Corvette for Mobile Tech Expo. That's Thursday at 6 p.m. And, the, and the, here's the deal. Sometimes when you have cars that are, especially classics, they're going to have scratches of glass. You, first of all, to get an original windshield may be impossible or very difficult or very expensive. So that's kind of a reason to try to polish the glass. The other reason is, is when you pull that glass out, you're going to find rust. Okay. And now you just turned a replacing a windshield into a rotisserie body off five year full restoration. Wife's going to kill you. Okay. <laughs> it's going to cost a lot of money. So instead, polish the glass. Yeah. Uh, but I would definitely recommend tuning in for that because I'm going to share some tips and techniques for working on classic cars like this 1957 Chevy Corvette with the wiper mar marks on it. Okay. But we do have a video. It's in the, the playlist for the live detailing classes. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's one of the most, you know, everybody it, it, tells it, me how detailed it is. In fact, one of the interesting comments I got from a friend was he's watched other videos on this topic and he says, I was the only guy that you could tell actually knew what the hell he was talking about when I say what to do and when I show what to do. Yeah. But it, it is a long video and it is, it is a definitely, it will show you the proper way to do it. Let's it'll show you what to do. Yeah. Okay. Let's and I always like to add, we only did that one section on that windshield in that yep. video. And the young man that works in the front lobby, his name is Michael, he took everything that we used home and did the entire windshield that looks like it's brand new. He did such a well, good job. Well, now it's gone because he got a new car. Yeah, but he did such a good job. All right, let's go to Jason. Uh, any way to get rust off of brake calipers? Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of different ways. You know, if, if you've got rust on your brake calipers uh, because it's missing paint, then you're just going to come back. So the real way to address it is to remove the wheel and tackle it and do it right the second time, okay. you know, maybe the factory didn't do it right. Like it's, it's a real problem. Okay. There's rust on these calipers down here. I'm not going to try to fix it because 
uh, you it know, is what it is. It's an old well, car. Well, the customer's not going to pay for it, so yeah. why do it? So, if it's your own, and you want to do own, it. It's been all the time it. you want to on it. Okay, let's go to Pastor Jack. Hello, guys. I'm calling. Calling. You're typing. <laughs> uh, from California, I just ordered my first supplies of detail products by listening to you guys. Yes, Boom. that's what we do. Give you the head knowledge so that way when you get the stuff, you know what to do. Uh, oh, here's a good one. And Ron Shoup, has Sonics ever explained how Beast is different from Wheel Cleaner Plus or Wheel Cleaner Full Effect? I asked about that. It's stronger. It's just, you know, whatever the magic voodoo juice is for cleaning and dissolving brake dust, there's more of it in the Beast. So it's just, just a stronger cleaner, but it's still very safe. I, I could be wrong. I'd have to check with Rob McCrary. He's my counterpart in the Sonax line. It could have a very slight amount of acid in it. I don't remember. I can't as, remember. As long as you use it with common sense, it's not going to be a problem because what acid does is it breaks the bond between the brake dust and the rim so you can get it off. And one of the things they try to do with that is create a product that was so powerful that for most wheels, you spray it on, wait about 30 seconds, blast with the hose, no brush, no bending over, no getting on your knees or your butt to clean the wheels. Uh, me, I always like to take a brush to a wheel and ag physically agitate it no matter what I'm using just because I think it does a better job. But a lot of people, you know, they're not as OCD as the rest of us, and they're happy just to spray it on, rinse it off, and call it good. Okay. But that's what that product was for is to really just make a spray on, rinse off, walk away. Wheel cleaner. All right, uh, David Bateman. This, I think, is going back to when we had the wheel with the rust on the plastic. Mm -hmm. That's rust from the wheels behind. Best get some alloys. <laughs> Replace yeah. it. Yeah, those, those steel wheels behind it looks yeah. horrible. Yeah, I mean, it's just... You, you, to me, you know, I saw that, I'm thinking, that's probably the least of your problems yeah. with that car. Yeah. What, what's the rest of the car yeah. look like? But you never know. I mean, it might be a customer and a... You know, then they can afford, they just want to look nice. So if, if, in another yeah, way you is. can fix that kind of, if you've got excessive brake dust causing, you know, a brake dust buildup and then a rust problem, is switch over to drum brakes. Get the conversion kit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't <laughs> Con listen to me. Convert your car over to drum brakes. Yeah, okay. Uh, Avoid brake dust. This is Pastor Jack again. Grios, I started using these products. They are great. I love them. Thank you because you made my purchase. So really Grios does make good stuff. You know, I, I'll tell you, I always like to share this. They're boss creams. Um, uh, what's interesting about their boss creams, there's four of them, is they all use the same abrasive technology. It's just the volume of abrasives varies from the most aggressive to the least aggressive. Whereas most other companies, when you're going between their compounds, their polishes, or their AIOs, they're actually using different types of abrasive technology in those. But with Grios, it's all the same stuff. And here's what you get. Forever buffing cycle, zero dusting, super easy wipe off, and great correction ability. And they're all about 20 bucks a bottle. Okay. And you don't even have to have a Grios tool to use them. Use them with anything. All right, Alan Saltman, only had a few moments. Glad I could stop by today. Mike and Yancey, always great. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Uh, the professional says the best. Uh, I don't know why he said the best, but okay. Because then he comes on and says spray X. I don't know. Find the, something you like and use no, it. No, I'm thinking yeah. that's when we were talking about the the um, spot remover stuff. Oh, I think yeah. with the the um, dye For, transfer. The dye transfer, yes. Okay, we have Mar Mario. Uh, good day from Aqua Calentas. The hot waters. Hmm. Howdy. Uh, <laughs> Thomas Kirby comes in here. Tesla vegan leather. <laughs> vegan leather. Yeah. Oh, we have Russ Gerbunk coming in here. I don't hear any Wolfgang recommendations. Do you not like Wolfgang? Uh, I love Wolfgang. Wolfgang. We have some really good stuff. Deep yeah. gloss paint sealant. Yeah, ah, you know, I, I like the, the fusion paste wax. Yeah, that's um, amazing the, too. The Uber compound. The, uh, the all the abrasive technology in the Wolfgang line is top notch. And recently, they reformulated the AIO in that line. The old AIO it worked good, but it was real pain to wipe off. And the new stuff works just freaking amazing. Uh, yep, we're we're on the the Tesla seats. We have Michael O'Neill. Shaving mousse is also good for stains. Never tried that. Yeah. That would be interesting. All right, we have CJ Warkin. Uh, best way to prevent water spots detailing in Florida sun with no shade or deionized water. Yep, deionized water. Get a CR spotless water uh, filter. Or wipe the water off. No, he doesn't have yeah. a deionized oh. water. Oh, the best way to do it, yeah. yeah. Um, well, after you're done washing the car, dry it off the water. 
And then you or want your spots. Rinse and dry, rinse and dry, rinse and dry. Yeah, dry the water off. You know, the, the only way to wash a car and not dry it off is to have some sort of filter system. But I'd still dry it off or get a, get a leaf blower, you know, blow it off. Uh, put a coating on the car and put a leaf blower on there and blow it off. But again, if you're running into water spots, here's what you want to do. Ask yourself, what is in the water? <laughs> What's in there that's so corrosive is etching urethane. Urethane paint, that's modern base coat, clear coat technology. Urethane paint's pretty stout in and of itself. You know, so if you've got something dissolved in the water that's etching holes into the paint, what's in that water? My gosh, you know. Oh, here. here. Sometimes there's just no easy answer. Okay. We have Eric Perez here. How do, how can I get cake darn mud off the underside of my car? The mud sat there since early January and I use a sprinkler, but it did little removing the mud. Um, Been there, done that. Yeah. Next time you go mudding, you spam. <laughs> yeah. Your Spray your hole underneath your truck with spam frying pan. Yep, that you works. Know. And uh, you could do that. And I've always just done the oscillating sprinkler. So the kind that goes like this. Yep. this I've had a bunch of mud trucks in my life. And just put it there. You know, but the other thing you can do is, is right after you're done mudding, is uh, that's when you wash, wash it. it. <laughs> Don't um, let it sit. Yeah. Another time, I was fortunate that I had a really large uh, A-frame engine puller. It's like 20 feet tall. And I just hooked it up to the front bumper and cranked up the whole front of my truck. And then I just washed it. So I just stood it on end. So if that's available to you, find some sort of uh, uh, overhead crane that you can lift your car up. It's, what's going to happen is the back end's going to bottom out and hit the concrete at some point. But you can get a car pretty high up before that happens, <laughs> then wash it. <laughs> all right, I just let you go on that one. All uh, right. Uh, I wish I had pictures showing that. All right, we have Richard. Yancey, how many hours, minutes until your beast is delivered? I know, right? You need a countdown. I, I do need a countdown. You got one in your office. I, I, uh, you have I, one in your I office. I do have. I'm yeah. going to set that countdown clock. I have a All right. Thank you, Richard, uh, or you, you both. All right. Uh, I know it soon can't stay online due to my job today, but I'll watch the video later for the answer. Uh, like I said earlier, it was shipped from Canada. It's supposed to be in Orlando on the 23rd of this month, so I'm hoping by the 25th it'll be in my grubby little mitt. So hoping, hoping. Uh, soon. Not soon enough, but soon. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What's the best? Whoops. Amber? Uh, Amber Stevens. What's the best polishing machine for under 200 bucks? Uh, Griot's G9. Can't beat the lifetime warranty. Lifetime warranty, a lot of power. Uh, what would you use? My next choice would be a Porter Cable. All right, Arthur Rosenberg, what would you use to restore, fix faded trim? Well, plastic or, you know, anodized? Does it, do you it say? Just, that's all he says. Well, well if, if, if it's black. plastic, I'd get, I'd clean it really well, as good as you can, and put solution finish on it, and then top it with your favorite dressing. Solution finish also just launched their own dressing to top the yep. solution and finish part It actually works really with. well on my wife's Jeep, too. Yeah, so solution finish is what it is. It's this carbon black milled to the size of a a virus so it can get into the plastic. It's not a dressing. You want to put something over the top of it, but it will bring the black back. If you're working on like anodized aluminum trim like you find on high-end cars, I've had really good luck using uh, the Blackfire One Step with the microfiber pad on the Rupes Nano in rotary mode. Okay. Uh, let's go here. Michael Angerstein, what's up? I think he was saying what's up to somebody. What's up, dog? What's up? <laughs> All right, Alex Panera, good to see you guys. Thank you for tuning in. We were here last week. I was gone. Yep. yep. Yes, you were gone. Brandon R. Latoya. Hello from Reno, Nevada. The biggest little city in the world. Yep. Uh, ooh, all right, here we've got another. Chris from Bresula. I don't know where that's the at. The city where they built so there's no water. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Can you recommend pads and compounds for the Rupes Mille? I have... I yes. have a new to me black Cheyenne that's like lived and touched car wash and detailed with steel. Wow. The, the new, uh, the new. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here's what I do. If I had a Miele, I would put the uh, the six inch backing plate and get the brand new or you know the fairly new uh, recently introduced uh, Rupes seven inch yellow and white foam pads. Then, then would you what, use whatever products yeah. you like? Those pads are amazing. I love those things. All right. Uh, we have Renardo. Hey, Mike. And hey, Renardo. And I've been. Waiting to use this, thank you. Just, we never get to use this. I always have it ready. It's always here by my side, Renard. All right, uh, let's go back here. Brandon, again, what is better in what situation? Using regular force air from air compressor to clean pads 
a pad washer or a tool like a tornador? Well, cleaner. anytime you're forcing, the only time I like to use compressed air of any type is microfiber. Foam, you're going to shove everything into it. So it Microfiber or wool? Or wool, yeah. yeah. So fiber pads. But when it comes to foam, forcing whatever you're trying to clean off into the pad just doesn't even make sense. Me, I throw everything in the wash machine. Can you scan over there? I'll uh, get the, yeah, okay. the so lights in the way. Th there, there's a whole pile of pads over here that all just came out of the dryer. So I throw them in the washer, throw them in the dryer, put them over here, get ready to use them again. Um, I throw all my pads in the wash machine in the dryer. I use microfiber detergent. And you know, most, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, there's no problems. Once in a while, you lose the backing. So you know what? Just Chalk it up to, hey, look at all the time I saved not cleaning by hand or using other method. The new, um, the new uh, System 4000 Lake Country Pad Washer, though, I have one over here set up for my class. It actually works really good. So that's another option. But here's the deal. We've covered this in a class before. Uh, pad washing is something you do at the end of the day. You yep. don't try to like buy two pads and buff out an entire car with it because you're able to go to a pad washer and wash it because then you've got a wet pad. And even uh, fiber pads work best when they're dry with the only thing that's on them is the product you're using. So uh, any, however you want to clean your pads, it's always something you do at the end of the day, not as you're working around the car trying to skimp on buying pads. Okay. All right. Speed round. Speed round. Speed round. Speed round. Remember, speed round. All right, Matt, Cecil, Mike, can you post the rest of the boat class pictures from this past March? See you in September. You got called out. Yeah, you know, I'd like to, but like right now, I'm behind on writing new product reviews. You know, one of the things I never have enough time in my job to do is process the pictures, upload the pictures, and insert the pictures. It's very time consuming. I'm the only guy in the industry that does it. Uh, it's valuable to me. I wish I had the time to do it. I'll try to make the time to do it. And the pictures really tell the story. You know, if the company was really smart, they would find a way to help me do this because what it does is it sells products. It sells classes. It, a picture tells a thousand words. And so not getting the pictures up from any class I teach is really lame. We should, that's something we should prioritize here as a company. Well, we need to, we need to work on that. Yeah, because um, I'm like the only guy that does it. I'm probably one of the only guys around that knows how to actually work on a form anymore. And well, Facebook because you're, you're the only one aren't you're the only one aren't a form. <laughs> Facebook and Instagram, you know, I love them, but you know what? They're they're fleeting. Anything you put on there's just gone. You can't share tons of information like I share. So it's you know it's well. it's not a very good interface for lots of in-depth information. It's good for one-liners. We, so. we can agree to disagree. But, uh, okay. it, everything has its purpose. But, uh, all right, here we go. Yeah, I'll, I'll try. Speed I'll try. round. Speed round. Speed, speed round. round. Nick Peterson, really wish I could attend the class. Hopefully you can, uh, hopefully can attend in the future. Hope to see you here too. Um, this one, as you were talking, I, I read ahead and this one I thought was hilarious. William Lara, Mike, can we sing happy birthday to Yancey and hit him in the face with a cake? Huh, no. no. <laughs> uh, I, I like Oops. Yancey too much and there we go. that's a good waste of cake. Wow, man. Uh, Another have it on a plate with a fork. Okay, we had, Ed, do you recommend 303 protectant for interior and exterior plastics? If you do, why? Uh, 303 makes a good product. You know, um, I find the protectants a little bit too shiny for my taste for interior surfaces like the dash, uh, but I still use it because it's a good product. You know, it has a great reputation and uh, it, 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 it performs as advertised. Okay. And, uh, you know, for exterior plastic, you know, um, I'm kind of a big fan of the solution finish and then putting 303 over the top of it. It just depends on what the material is. I just used um, a one-step uh, yeah, rubber cleaner that. conditioner on the plastic of this uh, Corvette here in the Pinnacle line. It's water-soluble, but you know you're going to close the hood, so it's not going to really get washed off in the rain. It's, okay. So. All right. Uh, but 303 gotta, makes good stuff. Hold on. I got I to gotta clear my throat for this one. Yeah. I like their multi-surface cleaner, by the way. If you've never tried it, get a bottle. It's a really nice product. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Detailing Law UK. Dun, dun. I just that had that in my head. <laughs> Hi, Mike and Yancey. Miss, just joined. We'll have to rewatch. Good vibes. You're all, you lots are doing a great job. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. We try. Uh, Vanguard Customs is coming in. What's up, brother? Appreciate you guys' advice and great knowledge. It's all him. I just make it where you guys can see it. Uh, mm -hmm. Vanguard Customs. Tune in next week. Do you guys have any giveaways? Just curious. 
Tune in next week. We should give something away. Love this your trick show, guys. It's got to be the lower. Tune in next week. It's got to be the lower forty-eight. Otherwise, shipping gets to be a hassle. Well, the, yeah, the, everything will be announced next week, next Thursday. It's going to be a fun one and huge. I mean, I can't give it away. Tune in next week, three o'clock Thursday. You're going to want to be here because by three fifteen, you will know what is going on, mm -hmm. and you're going to want to win. Okay. Am uh, I eligible to win that? No. <laughs> You're part of it. Oh. <laughs> no, we're not giving away mics. <laughs> All right, but anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. Next week, next Thursday, 3 o'clock. What's Tune left? In. All right, we just have a couple. Uh, Ian Valais, he's always he's usually always turning in. Uh, hello, gentlemen. Speaking of machines, what fe failures do did your machines have? I don't mean usual faults like damaged cable, but really mechanical or electrical faults. For example, Rupus polishers have a problem with the speed controller. We've had to repair several machines. Let me put that back up. Machines by replacement. Maybe it's a topic for the future. Greetings from Slovakia. He's our guy. Yeah, you Slovakia. know, luckily Rupes is a good company. They stand behind their tools. So does Flex. So does Grios. I mean, um, out of all the tools that we have, I mean, there's you can see them in the background. There's hundreds. There's hundreds, literally hundreds of tools. Hundreds of tools. Over 200 tools. There yeah. Easily. Um, how many tools of yours is actually broken? Very rarely. Um, of the brands I just listed, rarely does anything ever break. I, you know, it's just, you know. But it's just as a fact of life, tools gonna break. So it's gotta deal with it. I'm, I, you know, personally, I use the Beast a lot. I use the Supa, the mm. Supa Beast, and um, I have yet to break one. Okay. Uh, you know, I've dropped mine. I don't know how many times, and it's still kick. Yeah. It, it's an awesome tool. All right. Last question, and there's some other comments and stuff on there, but it's like an hour and a half already, so I just got to end this one. <laughs> Tony Berchetta, I love the name, love the avatar in your picture, I mean, it has this guy with a big old fro. I absolutely love it. Mike, you still use Amazing Roll-Off? Um, I haven't used it for a while. Uh, we can't wash cars here at Auto Geek anymore. I, was, I tend to use that for like engine detailing, things like that, but it, it's, a, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's a cool product. It's amazing roll-off. Yeah. yeah, amazing roll-off. One time, I, uh, a lot of people may not know this, but I, I did an engine detail, and I, I poured a um, Tornador a car cleaning gun, the foaming one. I filled it full of the uh, amazing roll-off, and I actually uh, filled the entire compartment of my uh, blazer with amazing roll-off foam. And then I sit there and kind of dwelled. Then I scrubbed it and did an engine detail. And I it was just a cool looking picture. You can probably find it by typing into uh, Google Amazing Roll Off Mike Phillips 1975 Jimmy Engine Detail. A string of words like that. Probably, and search images and you'll see this whole engine compartment filled full of foam. If you haven't noticed by now, if you want to know anything auto detailing, just type in your question, however you have it phrased, and add Mike Phillips at the end. Guarantee he has an article. Probably got an article. You know, I, I think I'm at 991 articles, almost a thousand. Slacker. Yeah. Sheesh. 909. I did a count there a day ago. 991 articles. So you're gonna have nine more. One. Wait, I need nine more. You, that way you can just yeah, get to a thousand. Well. Okay. So with that being said, thank you all again for tuning in to another edition, our 44th. Um, actually, that's kind of nice. Next week, 45. There's something round about that number. And so we will have an amazing, amazing announcement. I'm like so fired up for this. I cannot wait. And uh, don't forget, Thursday night at 6 p.m. live will be Mobile Tech Expo, and I'll be showing glass polishing to remove scratches on a 1957 Corvette. You know what I just thought? What's that? We have this at 3 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Then we have you at six o'clock. Yep. Next Thursday for this one's going to be a little bit shorter. It's going to be an hour or less. Okay. So it'll be a quick topic. Um, just because I just realized that we have two of them to do next week. So. Yep. So yeah, uh, majorly it's probably going to be just the big announcement that's going to be, and maybe a couple little things. But yeah, it's huge. I can't wait. Yep. All right. With that being said, thank you all again. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, like, subscribe, share, ring the bell. All that good stuff next week. Huge enough. I mean, yes. Huge. Huge. I'm, I'm like enormous. Enormous. Yeah. All right, you can stay there. Okay. And we're just going to keep it live until next week because I'm so fired up about this. Coming country. to you in Colorado, Rupes. Getting this out of my office. You think? <laughs>